How is everyone doing today? Um, so, welcome to the first Youth on Sunday, Harvest at the Silo, whatever we end up calling this thing. Um, I want to thank you all for coming. Um, we are going to get started here with prayer with Kaylin and Peyton come up and praying. Um, so today is just going to be the youth leading us through pretty much everything. Um, we are asking all the youth to be in the back two rows or standing room only. Um, just so they have a full view of everything going on. Um, with that, I'll hand it over. Okay, so I'm going to pray, and then pa Peyton's going to pray. Um, so if you just, like, bow your heads and, like, pray with me um, and pray over the service and just over worship and over anything that you feel called to pray over. Um, so, dear Lord God, we thank you for today, and I thank you for each and every one of um, the people that are in here, Father. You have brought them here for a reason um, special for today, Father. God, I thank you for our children, and I thank you for our youth, God. You say that you love our children because you love us, Father, um, and you... You say to have faith like children. So today, Father, I just ask that you would just um, have their faith just be a bold representation of you, Father, and that these parents and these people in here, Father, could just see how much your your kids um, love you, Father. Um, so, Father, I just break off any fear that they might have about coming up here and standing in their gift, um, any um things that the enemy has told them that they um, can't do. I just break that curse in the name of Yeshua. And God, I just speak life over them, God. So I just pray, uh, Father God, that your Holy Spirit would just come and invade this place, and invade this space, invade each and every one of us, Father. Um, come and break us. Come and move in us, Father. We just invite your Holy Spirit in this room, in this space, Father. You're free to move, Father. We invite your wind. We invite your fire. We invite your cleansing water just to come and reign over this place, Father God. And we thank you for you. And we thank you for the glory. We thank you for this building. We thank you for these people, Father. And we thank you for our gifts that we can use to glorify you, Father. So, God, we thank you for that. Thank you, Father, for everything that you're doing, Lord, for this our church, Lord. Thank you for just the, these pastors that you've given us, Lord, and Ryan and Amy, that they are just stepping up and leading us, Lord, and coming and helping us. Please just bless the service today. Lord, pour our hearts and our minds into it. That every gift that's used, every word that's given, Lord, um, everything that's sang and played, Lord, that it would just glorify you, Lord. And um, we just bind up every spirit of fear in the name of Jesus, Yeshua, that it would have no power over any of your people, Lord, in this place, Lord. And that we don't get up here and we get away. And that we speak with you alone. Can I have Ryan and Jason come up here, please? And can I have all of the youth come up here also? <laughs> uh, Father God, we thank you um, for Ryan and Jason, Father. And Father. I thank you um, for um, their gifts that you have given them, Father. Um, I just pray, God, that you would just anoint them, Father, today, God, and anything that they're going through, anything that they're um, they have anxiety about. Father, I just pray that you would just fill them with your uttermost peace and your love, Father. So I just pray, God, um, that as their gifts arise, um, um, God, you would call them pastors, Father, because they have a pastor shepherd gift. So I pray, God, that that gift just keep, continues just to um, anoint them um, and to bring that forth, Father. So I just pray, Father, over them. 
I just pray goodness. Um, I pray I pray blessings over them, Father, that you would just anoint them with your blessings, God, and your holiness, Father. God, we thank you for them. We thank you for each and um, everything that they do, um, where it's seen or maybe it's unseen, Father, God. Whatever they're doing, they're serving you, Father. So we thank you for that gift. We thank you for them just to be able to serve you and just to put you forth and put you first, Father God. And we thank you for their hearts that they have for these kids and to teach um, others about you, to put you forth in their life, to put you center in their life, Father. So, God, I just ask that you would just bless them, bless them with your Holy Spirit, Father God. Bless them with love, bless them with financial things if they need that. Um, God, that you would just just pour out a blessing upon them, Father, that they would just be able to know, God, that you're pleased with them. And whatever they're doing, that you're pleased with them. Father God, we thank you for them, and we thank you for everything that they're doing in this church to bring um, people to your kingdom, God, and we thank you for them. In your name, amen. All right, so now we're going to be led by, no, we're starting worship. Yeah. <laughs> I saw my kids running away. I was like, no, no, no. Um, so we're going to start with worship and uh, have the youth lead us. I searched the world, but it couldn't fill me. Man's empty praise and treasures of faith are never enough. Then you came along and put me back together, and every desire. Now satisfied here in your love. Oh, there's nothing better than you. There's nothing better than you, Lord. There's nothing, nothing is better than you. I'm not afraid. Show you my weakness, my failures and flaws. Lord, you've seen them all, and you still call me friend. Because the God of the mountain is the God of the valley. There's not a place your mercy and grace won't find me again. Oh, there's nothing better than you. There's nothing better than you. There's nothing, nothing is better than you. Oh, there's nothing better than you. There's nothing better than you, Lord. There's nothing. Nothing is better than you. You turn mourning to dancing. You give beauty for ashes. You turn shame into glory. You're the only one who can. You turn mourning to dancing. You give beauty for ashes. You turn shame into glory. You're the only one who can. You turn graves into gardens. You turn bones into armies. You 
turn seas into highways. You're the only one who can. Oh, there's nothing that's better than you. There's nothing better than you, Lord. There's nothing, nothing is better than you. Oh, there's nothing that's better than you. There's nothing that's better than you, Lord. There's nothing, nothing is better than you. You turn mourning to dancing. You give beauty for ashes. You turn shame into glory. You're the only one who can. You turn graves into gardens. You turn bones into armies. You turn seas into highways. You're the only one who can. You're the only one who can. sound that saved a wretch like me. I once was lost, but now I'm found. Well, blind, but now I see. It was grace that taught my heart. my fears relieved how precious did that grace appear the hour I first believed can we do can we do a favor I messed up Saved a wretch like me. I once was lost, but now I'm found. Was blind, but now I see. Twas grace that taught my heart to feel.
chains are gone. I've been set free. My God, my Savior has ransomed me. And like a flood, His mercy reigns. Unending between what remains of me and this reckoning. Either way, I will bow to the things of this world. And I know I will never be alone. There is another in the fire standing next to me. There is another in the water. Holding back the seas and Should I ever need reminding What power set me free There is a grave that holds nobody Now the power lives in me There is another in the fire Oh, there is another another in the fire. Oh, there is another in the fire. Oh, and I can see the light in the dark. 
darkness as the darkness bows to him. I can hear the roar in the heavens as the space between wears thin. I can feel the ground shake beneath us as the prison walls cave in. Yeah, nothing stands between us. Nothing stands between us. And I can see the light in the darkness as the darkness bows to him. I can hear the roar in the heavens as the space between wears thin. I can feel the ground shake beneath us as the prison walls cave in. Yeah, nothing stands between us. Nothing stands between us. There is no other name but the name that is Jesus. He who was and still is and will be through it all. So come with me in the space between all the things I've seen and this reckoning. And I know I will never be alone. And I know I will never be alone. Be another in the fire. Standing next to me. There'll be another in the waters. Holding back the seas. And should I ever need reminding? How good you've been to me. I count the joy come every battle. Cause I know that's where you'll be. And I can see the light in the darkness. As the darkness bows to him. I can hear the roar in the heavens. As the space between where's thin. I can feel the ground shake beneath. Us as a prison walls cave in, yeah, nothing stands between us. Nothing stands between us. There'll be another in the fire standing next to me. There'll be another in the waters holding back the seas. Should I ever need reminding how good you've been to me? I count the joy come every battle, because I know that's where you'll be. If you, for, if you follow the progression of the song, it starts out with there was another in the fire. Then it says there is another in the fire. Then it says there'll be another in the fire, meaning we have someone in the fire with us all the time before now and after he goes before us and behind us let's just sing it out there isn't there is another in the fire standing next to me there'll be another in the waters holding back the seas and should i ever need reminding how good is sin set free? There is a grave that bears the burden. Okay, let's just go to that tag. There is another in the fire. Oh, there is another in the fire. Oh, there is another in the fire. Oh, there is another in the fire.
changes Darkness starts to tremble at the light that you bring And when you walk into the room Every heart starts burning And nothing matters more than just to sit here at your feet and worship you we worship you. We love you. We'll never stop. We can't live without you. Jesus, we love you. And we can't get enough. Oh. into the room sickness starts to vanish every whole situation ceases to exist and when you walk into the room the dead begin to rise cause there is resurrection life in all you do we love you and we'll never stop we can't live without you jesus we love you and we can't get enough all this is for you jesus Come and consume, God, all we are. We give you permission. Our hearts are yours. We want you. We want you. Come and consume, God, all we are. We give you permission. Our hearts are yours. We want you. We want you. Come and consume, God, all we are. We give you permission. Our hearts are yours. We want you. We want you. We love you. And we'll never stop. We can't live without you. Jesus, we love you and we can't get enough and all this is for you Jesus sing it again we love you we'll never stop we can't live without you Jesus we love you and we can't get enough all this is for you jesus okay so on Thursday night, we had worship night with the youth. So usually we have sermon and we have groups, but this Thursday night we had worship. Um, so I watch the youth get out of their comfort zone. And if you notice today, we're in the back because sometimes we feel like the pews restrict our worship. So we're in the back. We're praising God um, today. But on Thursday night, I watch faith. And I watched Brooks get out of their comfort zones. So Faith, she got down on her knees um, and prayed to God. She just felt like she didn't want to because she felt like there were people restricting her. But God said, now, I need to go and I need to do this now. Um, and I saw Brooks raise her hand. Um, and what I got to explain to her is what it means when you raise your hand 
and wh- what it means when you like receive God's love and receive God's peace um, when you receive God's blessing so when I put my hands like this so my palm is facing heaven is what I look, look at it as so when I my hands are like this for me it's a symbolize of God I want to receive something from you so when we're singing the blessing I said God I want to receive that blessing that you have for me God I want to receive that love that you have for me and God talks about in the Bible about how like this is a sign of raising your hands for surrender. I don't know if y'all know this. Sometimes we do this because we see other people doing this. But I just want to tell you what I do is kind of like I, if I have something in my hand and I want to give it to God, I'm saying, God, my hand is over you, me, so that means you're over me. God, that this is a a sign of surrender. When you're putting both hands up, this means I'm totally surrendering all to you. Um, So I just challenge you during worship, if you want to receive something, and this is kind of how I do it. Other people might do it different ways. Um, If you want to receive something, open your hands. Because if God wants to give you something, he doesn't want your hands to be closed. That's not open. God wants you to receive something. And then if your hands are surrendering, you're surrendering everything that you have to God, everything that you are dealing with to God. So, I'm good. Um, The devil is always going to try to hold you back, just like when you stick your hand in a flowing river, the current's going to try to pull you back, just like the devil. Like, it's... Like when I got on my knees, the devil was trying to pull me back, and he was like, don't do it. And God's just like, do it. And so I did it, and I was really nervous, but I did it. And Okay, so I have been really scared to really raise my hand or really do anything because I'm scared of being judged. So Thursday night, we were singing, and Jesus told me to raise my hand. So I did, and I really didn't understand what it meant. So afterwards, I went to Kaylin, and I asked her to explain it to me. And she told me that it's just God telling me to just give up things that I'm holding back. So I understood a lot more what it meant after that, and... Ever since then, I've been able to really do anything without having that fear or being scared of the judgment that I had. All right, um, so I have two guys up here with me who wanted to share uh, two verses about worship and uh, <laughs> and uh, what it means to them. Um, so. Psalms 150 through 6, let everything that he breathed pray the Lord, praise the Lord. You guys rock. I love this church. Just saying. You guys rock. (laughs) Hebrews 12 through 28. Therefore, since we are receiving a kingdom that cannot be shaken, let us be thankful and so worship God acceptably with (laughs) reverence and awe for our God is a consuming fire. All right. Thank you all. Um, just want to say our youth is amazing. Um, they're conquering fears and doing everything. Um, I think Mandy's coming up here and say something real quick.
So I got two little girls that wanted to come to the front with me today. So they're going to come up here and stand with me. So what you guys don't know that you're probably about to find out through this video, I'm going to point some things out. So first off, I made this video. And actually, first off, hold on just a second. I'm going to pray. So, Lord, I just pray right now and just ask God that everything that comes out of my mouth right now, Lord, is your Holy Spirit, Lord. Um, I don't ever want to be up here for my glory. So I pray, God, that you would just use this time, Lord, that you would just get the glory and the praise and the honor, Lord. Um, and I just shut down any fear right now in the name of Jesus that is holding anyone back from worshiping and praising you to their fullest extent, Lord. And I pray that you would open hearts and minds of people in this room, Lord. I pray that their eyes would see things for the first time. I pray that their hearts would see things for the first time, God. I pray for your Holy Spirit present to just fall down and rain down in this place, Lord. I pray for your fire, Lord Jesus. I want to see the all-consuming fire, Lord God. So I pray for your all-consuming fire in this place, Lord God. And I ask, God, that you would get people in freedom, Lord Jesus. I am passionate about seeing people in freedom. So I pray right now in the name of Jesus that if anyone is fearful about anything and Satan is trying to lie and get in their mind, you have no power or authority over anyone's heart, mind, body, soul in this room right now in the name of Jesus. You have to get out right now. Leave this place. You have no power or authority over these young kids in the name of Jesus. These kids are blessings. They're going to rise up. Spirit man, rise up. And every single person in the room right now, you rise up in the name of Jesus. Amen. So, I'm going to point some things out about this video. First off, um, Peyton, in his video, he says something about worship and perfectionism and being perfect. Was he perfect this morning? Did he mess up? Do you know that that was one of his biggest fears? And he just did it. And I also want to point out to Mungus back there, I put him on the spot this morning. And he told me that one of his biggest fears, which you'll also hear in this video, is talking in front of 10 or more people. Did he just talk in front of 10 or more people? And Jacob back there, Ron and I sat down with him this week and did a spiritual gifts test with him. And he told me one of his biggest fears was talking in front of people. Did he just talk in front of people? So I want to say that this video, if you will watch this, this video was, I did this and I don't do media, so bear with me. But it's, much, it's a bunch of casual conversation that we had with the youth kids. And you're going to hear their hearts and... Um, I'm just going to say just pay attention because our kids are watching everything. And this kid right here, my kid, she heard me and Ryan talking this week, and she asked me if she could come to the front of the church with me. And she's never done that. So I think she's breaking out of fear. She's been up here before, but she's never asked. So I just want to praise God for that. Yes. <laughs> yes, honey. So we're just going to watch this video. What do you like about church? Um, worship. Would you make worship longer, worship shorter, preaching longer, preaching shorter, kids to church longer, kids to church shorter, more prayer, less prayer? Um, longer worship. Okay. So what do you think worship should look like? I think, well, for some people, they just want to, uh, just stand there and just raise their hands and be peaceful and not like dance around and stuff. And that, and I think you should pray when you worship. And I think you should let the Holy Spirit flow like that. Remember that Waymaker song that was like 20 minutes long? Mm -hmm. The lady singing that song was that it was at like a concert and they were supposed to do just a normal Waymaker. But she just got on her knees and fell and the guy was like, what's going to happen because there was like two singers mm -hmm. and so I think that's what we should do in worship and and like I think the people I think some people should be I don't really think we should sit down when we worship well I mean if you're getting on your hands and knees I mean I don't really think you should sit down when you worship definitely not look on your phones when you worship unless it's like a really emergency and uh 
say people like in that one, I forgot what that verse is, but Dad said that, that it's supposed to be a battle cry and you're supposed to scream. Like get on, a, on their knees and start uh, worshiping and like instead of just like doing that, I mean, and that's okay, but I mean, I kind of wish they would like get more just, I don't know, excited for Jesus. I feel like they should go in the back and start just like dancing and singing their heart out instead of just standing there and not doing it because no one else is doing it. Go back and do it. Give me two or three things that you like about our church. The way Jason preaches. The way we really don't have any certain way anyone really does anything. So like no agenda. Yeah. Okay. You're telling me you're saying like we're afraid to worship. What are you afraid to do? Let me ask it that way. What are you afraid to do? I'm afraid to like get up there and start dancing and like like that okay what about you i'm more of afraid to, to uh raise my hand and get down on my knees or that's kind of dance what around like parker like, and jason yeah. did because you think you're gonna get judged yes. yeah by older people in the church yes okay are you afraid you're gonna get judged because they don't do it bit so you don't see it around you yeah the only people i really see doing it is parker and jason and mccall mccall like <laughs> jumps and starts <laughs> dancing got it what do you like about worship i like worship because i get to sing worship god just show everybody how much love i give them mm -hmm. and i like ever i like to see everybody else showing all their love, praising them, and all that. Yeah. What fears you um, when you worship? Uh, Is there anything that makes you afraid? Like to worship? Uh, not really, but I, I just don't like going up front and, like, talking to people and stuff. I just don't like talking in front of, like, big groups. I can talk in, like, ten or one to ten people each time, but more than that, it kind of stressing me out a little bit. Mungus, what do you like about church? The things I like about church is worship. I like, like going to kids' church and stuff, interacting with the little kids, teaching them like stuff, like good things, what's right and wrong. Why don't you like singing in front of people? Like, I think I get that feeling like I'm going to mess up, and then I'll be embarrassed, and people will laugh at me and all that like make fun of me and like haha you messed up learn learn the words to the song or something like that what is church supposed to look like i am the captain i make the rules <laughs> nah in all seriousness it's just a group of people that really do believe and love jesus like that really um let him dictate what's going on in their like everyday lives and that they're a group of people that meet together to encourage each other um to walk better with Jesus and to uh, just grow closer to Him, and they um, they just meet and have some praise and worship because we know that breaks down strongholds and, and fight spiritual what warfare. What keeps you from worshiping the way you want to? Uh, perfection, like just feeling like everything has to be perfect when I play or when I sing or just worshiping, just feeling like things have to go a certain way instead of just letting the Holy Spirit flow. So when we started asking these kids questions, we asked them a lot of other questions like, what do you like about church? What do you not like about church? And everything kept going back to worship. It was like this Holy Spirit just took over because if you notice, everything's about worship. And there were many other questions we asked these kids. So we decided we're going to give the kids what they want. So we're going to worship some more. Gonna have to take a minute to breathe after that one. <laughs> um, I'm gonna give a short word, so if the youth wanna sit down for a second and take a breather. Okay. 
Okay, so I don't know about y'all, but one of my favorite hobbies is probably to go people watch. I love to just pick a spot somewhere and just watch all the people walk by. Me too. Uh-huh, yeah. Um, so let me ask you a different question. How many of you in here like to be watched? When are you dancing? So how many of you have a kid or a kid in the youth or a kid that looks up to you in your life? If you do, would you just raise your hand? So pretty much the whole room. Um, so as you know, kids watch you. So whether you know it or not, you are getting people watched every day by your children. And I don't know if y'all noticed this this morning, but we asked our youth to sit in the back of the church. And during worship, they got to watch their parents' worship. And they got to watch their grandparents' worship. And they got to watch their role models' worship. So, with that in mind, um, I just want to read this verse. Um, it's kind of long, so bear with me, but please listen to the content of it. It's Ephesians 5, 8 through 20. It says, For you were once in darkness, but now you are light in the Lord. Live as children of light, for the fruit of the light consists in all goodness, righteousness, and truth. Find out what pleases the Lord. Have nothing to do with the fruitless deeds of darkness, but rather expose them. It is shameful even to mention... Um, mm -hmm. It is shameful even to mention what the disobedient do in secret. But everything exposed by the light becomes visible, and everything that is illuminated becomes a light. This is why it is said, Wake up, sleeper, and rise from the dead, and Christ will shine on you. But be very careful, then, how you live, not as unwise, but as wise, making the most of every opportunity, because the days are evil. Therefore, do not be foolish, but understand what the Lord's will is. Do not get drunk on wine, which leads to debauchery. Instead, be filled with the Spirit, speaking to one another with psalms, hymns, and songs from the Spirit. Sing and make music from your heart to the Lord, always giving thanks to God the Father for everything. In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. So right there it simply tells us that we have to wake up. You have a room full of kids back here pouring their hearts out to Jesus. We're all sleepers and we need to wake up. And the Lord's been telling me that, that our church is sleepy. Why are we sleepy? We're on the brink of a revival, and we have to wake up, and we have to worship Jesus, and we have to pour our heart into it. So I want to leave you with this. Considering that we're all sleepers, I think it's time for us to step out of our pajamas and step into our authority and worship like it, because worship is motivated by our love for God. So let's worship like it. And um, I feel led to have anybody up here, the parents, I'm going to ask you to get out of your comfort zone this morning, and I want to flood the back of the church with everybody. So if you all would get up and come worship in the back of the church, I would really appreciate it. So all that came about from Thursday night, because our youth uh, had a little worship night. Um, and they love to scream, they love to be praising for a full hour and a half, so that, with the video, we just decided to give them a little bit more uh, worship today. Um, so for the ones that don't know, I'm the youth pastor here. Um, but, um, but first off, I couldn't do anything about Mandy um, without all the servant leaders we have, McCall, Lisa, Kaylin, Wiki, Eli, Peyton on worship, all of our worship stuff, everyone that's here on Thursday night, none of this would be possible without them. Like, they all contributed huge to this. Um, so what I want to talk through today, like, real quick, and then someone up here who will do more than I will, will be here, um, is why I'm here and why we do what we do. Like, why do we do a youth Sunday? Why do we do youth every other Thursday? Um, so I've been in five churches since I've been born. Uh, Old Southern Baptist, Methodist, 
and two non-denominationals. Um, I grew up in the Southern Baptist, the uh, Free Will Baptist, the, and the Methodist. Um, I can tell you the Free Will had a youth program, but it was all about just being legalistic. We're here from 7 to 8 on Wednesday night, then we go get Taco Bell, because on Sunday we had KFC, so that's why we chose Taco Bell. Um, then the Methodist church I was in, when I walked in the doors, the average age dropped from 60 to like 40 just from one 12-year-old walking in. Um, so they didn't care about youth because I was the only one. Um, so then I got to a non-denominational who said everything right. You want to be in the kids' lives constantly, um, randomly, like sporadic. You want them to be surprised you're there, but know that you're going to be there for something, like whether it's a baseball game, take them out to dinner, doing something with them. You want to be in their lives constantly. Um, but we didn't really live it out. It was a great slogan. It was great to get people fired up to serve in the youth. But we, I mean, I never took a kid out, and I was a leader for two years. Um, but guess what? I didn't have time. We were serving every Wednesday, every Sunday. Like, if I would have asked Mandy to, hey, instead of hanging out with you tonight, I'm going to go take another kid out to, to eat, like, there would have been problems because we had very little free time. Um, and I got to another church that just, youth was just another checklist. We have it, so you feel happy about it. Um, so that's how we came up with every other week, because I ask every servant leader we have to be in their kids' lives the week for not having youth. Um, Kaylin has taken girls out. McCall's taken girls out. Wiki's had girls out. Every week almost, they've had a girl out pouring into their lives outside of this church. Um, well, the thing we have to remember is, like, yeah, you're pouring into your kid, but your voice gets tired. They've heard what you have to say a million times. If I put Wiki with a new girl, like, that's the first they've ever heard her say that. Same with McCall. Same with Lisa, like, and same with Eli. Like, that's the first time I've heard it. It might jog them, and guess what? When they're about to make that mistake they make at 17, they might think, I really don't want to have to tell Eli that I did this dumb thing. You know, that's all we're there for is that they know that Eli's going to be there, you know, next week to talk to him to see how their life's going. Um, so that all sounds great, but where is that in Scripture? Um, so if we look to Mark 10, 13 through 16, one day some parents brought their children to Jesus so he could touch and bless them. Go back. But the disciples scolded the parents for, bro for bothering him. When Jesus saw what was happening, he was angry with his disciples and said to them, Let the children come to me. Don't stop them. For the kingdom of God belongs to those who are like these children. I tell you the truth, anyone who doesn't receive the kingdom of God like a child will never enter it. Then he took the children in his arms and placed his hands on their heads and blessed them. So that's why we do what we do. Like, we are supposed to be touching children's lives, not just a checklist, not just making it so when someone, when a visitor comes, they can say, yeah, we have a youth program. We haven't had any change or seen anyone, like, actually impacted with it, but every Wednesday night, we have babysitting for you at 7 p.m. That's why we do what we do. We want to make sure when these kids leave, they say, Wiki, Kalen, McCall, Eli poured into my life, and when I go to college, I might call my youth mentor back up and said, you know, the t time you took me to Chick-fil-A changed my life. I'm now in FCA leading it, doing something. Like, that is a win for us. Like, we want to make sure that their lives are changed forever. Um, you know, there's also, you know, God has a plan for our lives. If you go to Jeremiah 1, 4 through 8. Hey, McCall. You want to read? Let's do it. So that's also why we're in these kids' lives. 
God has a plan for them. And we want to be there raising them up to that plan. Like, we want them to be, if they have a question at 7 p.m. at night, midnight, like, hey, this has came up, what can I do? That they know we're there and we'll answer. Like, that is why we do it this way. Um, you know, they're never too young. Like, I never want to hear someone say, my kid's too young to do X, my kid's too young to do Y. Like, if they've been, like, I want them to know that we've raised them, we've helped them, like, they feel empowered to do whatever they want. And so with that, I'm going to bring up the one who's going to do more than me. That's you, Parker. <laughs> you could have not had a more on brain answer for a butler in your life. Um, so with that, like, I'll vamp till he gets up here, just tell you more of what youth does. Um, every... Every other month, we're going to be doing youth worship where they just sing, come in, sing, and just praise God because sometimes you just need that. Like, And we've, we'll never get tired of it. God will never get tired of it. We also make sure we have different speakers coming in. Uh, this next youth, uh, Marshall is going to be in speaking to youth. Um, we have Wiki the week before, before worship. I've had Jason come in. Emily spoke at youth. Kaylin, McCall, like, I don't speak at youth every week. Because I just, I don't have that many messages in me. I've got like three or four a year, so I've got to pick the time where we go. Um, so we never for force the Holy Spirit or anything. We just let it go and let, let it be. I'm just talking to you. Get up here. All right, here's Parker. I just want to start out today with what do you think it would be like if, what do you think Paul would say if he could come back today and see and see what we're doing today? What do you think it would be like if he could come back today and see us cowering down in our houses and afraid of a virus or afraid to offend some if we went out and spoke the word of God? When Paul was teaching Timothy, he was in change and didn't know when he was about to get crucified. So what I'm trying to say is that us as Christians should be bold and stand up and go out and not be afraid of a virus or to offend someone. Because back in Jesus' day, Christians were not hiding in their houses, afraid that if they went outside, they would offend someone or get a virus and get sick. When they went out, they, they were getting crucified and they were getting killed, yet they still went out and spoke the word of God. I think I'm going to go to a verse in Re Revelation 21. And Jesus is talking about how he's going to create a new heaven and a new earth, and he's going to bring his people down to it. And, but I really want to focus on verse 8. It says, it says that but cowards, unbelievers, and the corrupt, and the murderers, the immoral, those who practice witchcraft, idol worshipers, and, the, and all liars. Their fate is in the fire lake of burning sulfur. This is the second death. So out of all those, there are two that stuck out to me. You know, well, most of the time we just think about the murderers and the ones who practice witchcraft and the idol worshipers are going to go to hell. But this talks about how the cowards and the liars will go too. And that is why we should stand up during this time as Christians. So I think I'm move on to my second point, point today. That it does not matter how old you are to change the world or have gifts and have discernment. <clears throat> In 1 Timothy 4, verse 12, it, Paul talks, it, it, Paul is speaking to Timothy, and it says, Don't let anyone think less of you because you are young, 
be an example to all believers in what you say and the way you live and your love, your faith, and your purity. So it does not matter what age you are to be able to have gifts, to be able to have gifts and discernment. And in Luke chapter 2, verse 41 through 47, it talks about how when Jesus was 12, him and his parents went to the Passover festival as usual. After the celebration was over, uh, let's see. They started home to Nazareth, but Jesus stayed back in Jerusalem. His parents did not miss him at first, but that evening he did not come home. So they began to worry. So, so they decided to go back to, Jer to Jer Jerusalem to look for him. Three days later, they finally found him in the temple, sitting among the, re the religious teachers, listening to them and asking questions. All who heard him were amazed at his understanding and his answers. And he was 12 when he did that. So like I said, we can be any agent just to have as much as much a sermon and gifts as, as adults. Now don't get me wrong, adults have a lot too. <laughs> and I just wanted to talk about the disciples. So there was thirteen disciples well, there was twelve disciples and including Mary thirteen. And isn't there more than thirteen people in this church? And those 13 people changed the whole world. So don't you think this small church can change the whole world? Because there might be a... Because there might be a point where we're the only church that's standing up. And so I wanna, I'm going to end today with a challenge. You don't have to do this, but I just wanted to challenge you to find worse but one person today to minister to, or more, at least one. You don't have to do it, but I just thought I'd challenge you. And now I'm going to turn it over to Ryan. So I do this thing with people like Ryan and Mandy that I put them in uncomfortable situations so they'll grow. Like I put them on the spot and Ryan just put me on the spot. Um, I didn't think I had a part today and my voice is ho hoarse from singing. But thank you to our youth for what you did today. Thank you. If you are an adult and you aren't challenged, motivated, inspired today, something is wrong. I was going to say no offense, but offense, taken. I don't care. Something's wrong if you weren't inspired by what these kids got up here and did today. Seven or eight years ago, this guy gives me a call, and I didn't really know who he was. And he said, I heard you're doing a men's group. Can I come? And I'm like, I don't really know what I'm doing, man, but come on. And his name was Ryan Hammonds. Wendy had been going to National Fitness Center and had met up with Casey and Mandy and started pouring into them. And some of you have heard this story before. Mandy asked Ryan to call me. I was walking away from a sales career to pursue ministry, and I didn't have a clue. I couldn't get up here and talk like Parker just got up here and talked. But that song says, Spirit, lead me. And that's all I did was ask the Holy Spirit to lead me. I had to get out of my own way. If I don't know enough, how can I do this? I haven't been trained. And all I did was, it was a challenge to me. If this young man's coming to me asking for help, I better be living out what I'm telling him, right? Then I got involved with youth at a church, and that changed my life. Because I was meeting with these 14, 15, 16-year-old kids, and we were talking about tough stuff they were, getting, they were being encountered with. And I was challenged again. I can't give them this advice if I'm not living it myself. So I'm challenging you guys that are older Get involved in these kids' lives. It will make you a better person. 
without youth, I wouldn't be standing up here. And I don't mean my childhood youth. I mean youth eight, seven, eight years ago. And the last thing I want to say, how old do you think the disciples were? Anybody know? Anybody besides Parker know? <laughs> be honest. How old do you think they were? Just what have you assumed all your life? 30s? I heard 20s, 30s, because Jesus was 30, right? He was 30 when he started ministry, ministered for three and a half years. It is believed that the average disciple was somewhere between 13 and 17 years old, except for Peter. I want you to think about that for a minute. In Jewish culture, if you were going to be a rabbi, you started training at five. And when you were 13, you were sent to work at 13. And they were supposed to know scripture inside and out at 13. So I'm just adding on to what they've said today. It doesn't matter how young you are. So if there's young ones here that think you don't have something, it doesn't matter how old you are. Jesus chose teenagers to change the world. But wait, they had jobs. They walked away. Yeah, if, if John and Andrew and those guys were old enough to not be teenagers, they wouldn't have been working for their dad anymore. They left their father's business. If they would have been more than teenagers, they would have had their own business. They would have been doing it themselves. So I just want you to be motivated by these young ones today. I want to give a huge hand, round of applause to Ryan and Mandy. <laughs> There's hardly a day that goes by that I don't thank God for their friendship, for their motivation, for their encouragement, and for how they're leading their youth. They're doing something I, possi I couldn't do. And I'm so thankful that God put you in our lives. I'm thankful for all you youth that came up here today. God has a huge plan for you. You might be scared to get up in front, in front of people and talk, but all it takes is one time. And then the second time's easier, and the third time's easier, and the fourth time's easier. Father, I pray that every adult in here today will be energized by what they saw. We talk about a remnant being risen up, and we saw it today. The famous analogy we always use is when Billy Graham was a kid, he didn't know he was going to be Billy Graham. But that one man touched millions of lives for Jesus. So today, Father, I'm praying that we're raising up more than one Billy Graham. That in this little church that's trying their best to be faithful to you, that we would be able to raise up warriors that will go out into the world with boldness and preach your word when no one wants to hear it, when society is against you, Father, that these kids would stand up to you. And I pray the parents would be motivated, the grandparents would be motivated. We all have a purpose in your kingdom, Father. We all have a place in raising these children and pouring into them. Father, let them be challenged to go deeper with you so they can take their kids deeper. Help me to be challenged that I will go deeper with you, Father, so I can take my kids deeper. Help us to go out this week and accept the challenge that Parker gave us to just talk to somebody about you. There's a world of hurting people that just need to know, Jesus, that you love them and you care for them. They don't need to be preached to. Father, thank you for showing me this model of discipleship that we could pass on because you did it, Father. This model where it's not about what you teach, it's about what you show. So help us to live our lives at home in a way that our kids would want to follow us to follow you. In Jesus' name, amen.